Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome back to my channel. So before we get into the video, I just wanted to let you guys know that the case for today is a very recent and ongoing one and there's a lot of new information coming out all the time. The family is so desperate to find May, so they have set up a GoFundMe account which is going to be used for the fees for their private investigator, printing off flyers and maps, as well as search event items like safety materials, waters, etc. So please, even if you only have one dollar to spare, consider donating to the family's GoFundMe to help alleviate some of the financial stresses that they are facing. I just wanted to make that known before we get further into this video because it's just so important. Also, before we get into today's case, I just wanted to go ahead and say a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Native. Native is a regular sponsor here on this channel and it's for a good reason. I absolutely love their products and I use them literally every single day. Native Native deodorant is a vegan, cruelty-free deodorant that is aluminum-free, paraben-free, and sulfate-free, and it's made with ingredients like coconut oil and shea butter. It has an amazing, smooth, non-sticky formula that dries very quickly. I personally keep a native deodorant in my purse at all times because given that some days I'm literally sitting at home all day on online classes, sometimes I forget to put on deodorant before I go to the gym, so sometimes I'll get to the gym and then realize that I never even put on deodorant deodorant, so I have to whip that one out of my purse and put some on real quick before I head in. It's honestly a lifesaver for me and anyone around me who has to work out next to me. The deodorant also lasts absolutely all day. I have days where I'm in person at the clinic working all day and then I go and work out after a long day and I still come home smelling amazing and fresh from the deodorant. I personally have the scents cucumber and mint eucalyptus and mint, and then charcoal as well. You guys also know that I love me some lavender and rose, but I figured that I would try out some new scents even though I am so addicted to that one. But I'm honestly so surprised at how much I love the scents of eucalyptus and mint and cucumber and mint. They just smell so fresh and amazing and it's a great scent for any gender in any situation. Same thing with charcoal. I can't even describe this scent as anything other than just a nice fresh smell, also very gender neutral smell. I also love their other personal care products. I have their body wash as well as their toothpaste with the body wash also being in that cucumber and mint scent. My boyfriend actually got native body wash quite a long time ago because he hates the residue and sticky feeling that other body washes leave on him. He's literally constantly telling me how much he loves his native body wash and I absolutely love it too. I also love native as a company. Last year, they donated over $2 million worth of product to Hope and Comfort, a nonprofit organization to help deliver health and confidence to those in need. There's also free shipping to the US and shipping is available to these countries listed here. Now, normally 3 deodorants go for $36, but if you go ahead and click the link down below and use code RACHELSHANNON5, you can get three for $24, which is 33% off. You can also get 20% off of body wash or the toothpaste if you use my code RACHELSHANNON5. I am so excited about this deal because you guys know how much I love Native and their products. So thank you again to Native for sponsoring today's video. So with all of that being said, let's jump into the case. Today, we are going to be discussing the disappearance of Maya Millette. 39-year-old Maya Millette, who went by May, was last seen on January 7, 2021 in her home in Chula Vista in San Diego, California. May is originally from the Philippines, but has lived several different places before landing in California. May was described as being tiny, but fierce with a bold personality, and she was absolutely full of life, but she's kind, gentle, and has a caring heart. She loves everything that has to do with the outdoors, including hiking and paddle boarding. She's also very talented at playing guitar and singing melodies. When she was in high school, she met a man named Larry Millette. The two headed off and started dating. By 1999, by the time they were 18 years old, the high school sweethearts officially tied the knot. 
the two enjoyed their lives together and seemed to have a relatively normal relationship for quite some time. By January of 2010, May gave birth to her first daughter. Then in 2011, they had their second daughter, and by 2016, they had their first son. May is absolutely beautiful, and her children are just so adorable, and they look to be the picture-perfect family. Now, May worked as a contract specialist in the naval base in San Diego for the 32nd Street Naval Station, and by all accounts, she liked her job and was a very hard worker. She worked her way up the ladder and was very dedicated to being a civil servant, but she was also a doting mother. She absolutely loved her children, and she would do absolutely anything for them. Now, May actually has five siblings and frequently spends time with them and her parents. They actually have a family group chat that they're always chatting in. However, on January 7th of this year, she suddenly stopped replying to messages in the family group chat. Her family wasn't totally panicked at first, but they'd actually had plans to travel to Big Bear Lake in San Bernardino County on January 9th for her daughter's 11th birthday. So when she stopped replying to any messages whatsoever about the plans for her daughter's birthday, and then when she missed the daughter's birthday in general, they knew that this was completely out of character for May and they became incredibly concerned for her safety. So after she had stopped replying to the family group chat about her daughter's birthday that same day on January 7th, May's brother actually went to the home that May and Larry shared together with their three children. When they got there, Larry was there, but he didn't see May. May's brother asked where she is and he told him that the two had actually gotten into an argument the night before and that she locked herself in their bedroom all day, saying that it's been around 11 hours and she still hasn't come out yet. So her brother went upstairs and just started knocking on the door and when she didn't answer, he just sort of left her alone because he thought that maybe she just wanted to be left alone. But after her brother left, he had sort of a weird feeling. Apparently, Larry was acting pretty nervous. He was a little bit shaky and it was very clear that he was not expecting May's brother to show up so unexpectedly. So by the next day on January 8th, when the family still hadn't heard from her, May's father went over to the home and asked Larry to open up her bedroom door with a key and when he did so, she was not in the room. Of course, her father was very shocked that she was not in the room, so he went in there and started looking around for clues. He noted that there was no sign that someone had left out of the window or that she had packed anything up to leave. Then, when he was looking at her bedroom door, he did notice that there was a hole in the door right next to the doorknob that had recently been patched up. When her dad asked Larry about this, Larry said that May had actually punched the hole through the door when she was upset during their argument. But he saw that her car was still at home, but her phone was nowhere to be found and it was either dead or turned off, so there was absolutely no way to track where she was using her phone. He also noted that her credit card and her license were both missing. All of this was just piling and piling to become their absolute worst nightmare, so by January 10th at 11 a.m., May's family reported her missing to police. So initially, her family went out on their own to search for May. They had started their searches at different trails in the nearby park because they had thought that it was possible that May had just gone for a walk after the argument with Larry. But there was absolutely no sign of her. By January 13th, her story was starting to get out there and more and more people wanted to come out to help. More than a hundred people came out and searched the trails at San Miguel Park for any sign of her. They had also looked into the Glamis area in Imperial County, but they had no luck. They had also made flyers with May's face on them and put them on light poles near the Japanese Friendship Garden in Balboa Park and at a visitor center. They just wanted people to see her face and to make her story as widely known as they could. But these searches just weren't leading them anywhere and they just kept hitting dead ends. However, after May's disappearance, some things started coming out that can be very telling of what may have happened. Turns out, Larry and May's marriage was on the rocks and things had been going pretty poorly for the couple for quite some time. According to May's brother-in-law, Richard, Larry had reached out to him and other family members 
members at different points all throughout of 2020, asking them for help in fixing his relationship with her. But according to Richard, it seemed like Larry was sort of the aggressor and he was trying to get everybody on his side. Richard and Larry had actually spoken on the phone for about an hour at one point in 2020, where Larry was just like, you gotta listen to me, this is all May's fault. And he just sounded very desperate. He had also sent the family many text messages over the year of 2020, accusing May of having a secret boyfriend. He really didn't have any evidence of this, but he was so sure that May had a secret boyfriend that he actually went to May's supervisor at work to move one of her male coworkers so that she could no longer interact with him at work. He was also using religion pretty heavily to try and get her to stay and for her to act how he wanted her to. He tried forcing her to read the Bible. He was also sending a bunch of text messages to people in the family who wanted to stay anonymous that contained Bible verses. From Proverbs, he wrote, for the lips of the adulterous woman drip honey and her speech is smoother than oil, but in the end, she is bitter as gall, sharp as a double-edged sword. Her feet go down to earth. Her steps lead straight to the grave. She gives no thought to the way of her life. Her path wanders aimlessly, but she does not know it. Now then, my sons, listen to me. Do not turn aside from what I say. Keep to a path far from her. Do not go near the door of her house, lest you lose your honor to others and your dignity to one who is cruel. Let strangers feast on your wealth and your toil enrich the house of another. At the end of your life, you will groan when your flesh and body are spent. You will say how I hated discipline, how my heart spurned correction. I would not obey my teachers or turn my ear to my instructors. This progress to Larry sending out hundreds of texts per day to family members. He tried using religion on her family to try and get them to make her stay. He even went to their pastor to try to get him to make her stay. This progressed to at one point in September. He had sent a picture that looked like some sort of shrine with a picture of May and Larry that looked to be splattered in blood surrounded by candles. He too sent this to a family member who has not been named. Larry was questioned about this altar picture, but he really didn't say anything about it. All of this is just so strange and creepy. But for the past year, him and May had just constantly been fighting and arguing about everything and May was just done with it. She wanted a divorce and it seemed like nothing was going to change her mind. However, even though she was the primary breadwinner of the pair, she was locked out of their bank accounts by Larry and he had complete control over all of their finances. She actually had to go to her own family in order to ask them for money to hire a divorce attorney. Turns out she had actually gotten into contact with a divorce attorney the same day that May was last seen. She had filled out an intake form on that very day and set up an appointment with him for January 12th. She had just wanted to have one last pleasant interaction, so she actually waited to do this appointment until after her daughter's 11th birthday party, but of course she never showed up to the appointment. Now, like I said, the family had talked all about how May and Larry were just always fighting and it was obvious that their relationship just was not as strong as it once had been. However, they did say that there were times in the recent months when they would fight, but then they would see them again and they would start acting close again. So they thought for quite some time that maybe they were just going through a really rough patch and that they were going to be able to work things out. However, another very strange thing about this entire situation situation is that I think around three weeks before May's disappearance, the family went on this big camping trip together. May's sister and brother-in-law said that the entire trip was a little bit uncomfortable for everybody because May and Larry were just fighting a lot over the entire course of this trip. Apparently, one of the arguments was that they were fighting over a Jeep that they had brought on this trip. I'm not exactly sure what the fight was about, but May's sister said that the two appeared to be having a very rough time. But she said that this time, Larry was acting a lot differently than he used to. They said, that it was clear that Larry and May were not going to be working through their issues and they really weren't trying anymore to mend their relationship. However, it later came out that apparently on this camping trip, May had actually confided in a family member who, again, this person is choosing not to disclose their identity due to fear of their own safety, 
but she had told this family member that if anything were to happen to her, it was Larry. Now, this case, like I said, is very recent and there is more and more coming out about her case all the time. So the next few things that I have to say are things that came out after I talked about the other things. So it might seem like a little bit of a thrown off timeline, but I'm just trying to give you all of the information that I possibly can in the best way that I know how. So now I'm just going to talk about some of the things that have come out about the night that May went missing. First, there was apparently surveillance video at either either their house or a neighboring house that showed Larry backing their SUV into the driveway the same night that she went missing and then leaving in the SUV and then coming back later and then backing it back up into the garage. I think this was weird because they didn't normally back into the garage, but I'm not 100% sure the significance of this, but I think you can kind of gather what the assumption is around this. The other surveillance video is very shocking video that came from a neighbor who also wishes to remain anonymous. But in the surveillance video taken on January 7th around 10 p.m. the same day and at around the same time that May was last seen, you can hear the sound of eight loud bangs happening one after the other, and of course, it's thought that these loud bangs were the sound of gunshots. Then, four days after May's disappearance on January 11th, the lawyer hired by the family, Billy Little, went into their home on the 2400 block of Paseo Los Gatos in Chula Vista to do a walkthrough and just sort of look at the house and see if anything looked off. When he got there, Larry was at home and he let him in, showing him his ID and was apparently very cooperative. Billy told Larry who he was and asked if they could do a walkthrough together and asked if he could see May's bedroom. But when when Billy got into the home, he immediately noticed that all of the windows were open and all of the fans in the house were on full blast and it was really chilly inside. He said that once he got to the bedroom, he also saw this hole in the door that I described earlier. It was around 10 inches wide and 8 inches tall and it was rectangular shape and it looked like it had been freshly repaired. He said to Larry, hey, this kind of looks fresh. And Larry said that, no, it wasn't fresh. It was actually a hole that May had punched through the door during one of their arguments much earlier. But Billy did not believe him and he said that it even looked as if it was still a little bit wet, like the repair was still a little bit wet, so it was obvious that it was very fresh. So Billy Little explained that due to the location of this hole, it's possible that someone had punched through the door in order to get their hand through the hole in order to reach in and unlock the door from the outside in. He also noticed that inside of the bed Room, there was another hole in the drywall that looked as if it was like shoulder height so it's possible that someone was punching the wall while standing up but this hole looked like it had been patched up much earlier so it didn't look like this hole was fresh. Then the other thing that Billy Little noticed was that there was a freezer missing from the garage in the home. The reason that he knew this freezer was missing was because a family member had actually told him that it was missing. So he went there to confirm and see if it was really gone, which it was. Now he did report that this was missing to police, but police didn't immediately do anything. So he went out to find it himself, 
which he did pretty quickly. He actually found this freezer at one of Larry's relative's house. Now, of course, when this relative was asked why he had this freezer all of a sudden, this relative said that he had actually planned on picking up the freezer months earlier and he just now happened to get around to getting it about 24 hours after May disappeared. For some reason, after months and months and months of you know, being too busy or too preoccupied to pick up this freezer, all of a sudden, right after Larry's wife goes missing, he gets the sudden urge to get this freezer. He also noted about the garage that it was clear that it had recently been cleaned. He said that in general, neither in the house or the garage, he didn't smell any bleach or cleaning supplies, but it was very clear that the entire garage had been cleaned spotless. But he said that the windows were open and the way the air was flowing in the house was such that you literally couldn't smell absolutely anything. So if there was cleaning supplies or bleach involved, you wouldn't really be able to smell it anyways. Now, another weird interaction between Billy and Larry was that Larry had actually told Billy that he had asked a family member to borrow some gun cleaning supplies so that he could clean his gun. Didn't give a reason why, literally just said that he wanted to clean it. Of course, Billy thought that this was really weird, that he suddenly just wanted to clean his gun out of nowhere in the midst of his wife being missing. Billy had also mentioned that he said something to Larry about gunshot residue being on Larry's hands, and Larry said, yeah, there probably will be residue on his hands because he had actually been out shooting his gun for fun in the recent few days. Again, no reason why he wanted to just go out and shoot his gun. It was just for fun. Billy said that as he was doing his walkthrough, he was just trying to be conversational with Larry in order to establish a relationship with him to hopefully speak with him again in the future, but he ended up not being able to speak to him again because police actually wanted him to stop speaking to Larry. And of course, Billy's going to respect the investigation and he does not want to go against police wishes. So he hasn't spoken to him again after this. And that's probably why Billy is even coming forward with all of this information about Larry is because he knows he can't get anything else out of him, so why not tell people what he knows now? Now, in the initial stages of the investigation, Larry was being very helpful with the searches. However, very quickly, he stopped doing any searches, he stopped cooperating with investigators, and he hired a lawyer. Of course, all of this is very suspicious. Why would you just sit at home and wait while other people are out there desperately searching for your wife? Why wouldn't you want to cooperate with investigators when your wife is literally missing and you have no idea what happened to her? But I will concede that hiring a lawyer in and of itself isn't suspicious. I think that no matter who you are, or whether you're guilty or not, you should always hire a lawyer if you're being accused of any crime or if there's even speculation that you might be involved. You should always hire a lawyer. I don't care if it makes you look guilty doesn't matter. You should hire a lawyer. It's just the smart thing to do to protect yourself. I say that pretty much in every case on my channel that you should hire a lawyer if there's any reason that you might be accused of being involved, again, even if you're not actually involved. However, in addition to what we already know about all of the weird things that Larry has said and done, I do have a lot of questions about things that we don't quite know yet. I do think that it's weird if Larry claims that he didn't hear any of the booms the night that his wife went missing because as you probably heard in the video, those booms are super loud. Now, I haven't actually seen him address this at all, so whether he said he heard them or not, I'm honestly not sure. Police probably know this, but we don't quite yet. But he also really hasn't said much about this entire thing in general, so we really don't know what his thoughts are or what he's claiming. But Larry did come out and talk about this walkthrough with the lawyer because, of course, Billy is being very vocal about what he found in the home when he did this walkthrough. So Larry came back and said, quote, he lied and presented himself as NCIS to gain access into my home. He misrepresented himself to gain access to my family's home as well, claiming to be NCIS. He lies and misrepresents himself, posing to be law enforcement. Also, I'm not quite sure if impersonating NCIS is a crime, but it should be. More lies, implications, and speculations. I do not hate anybody and just hope that people can stop spreading lies and making our lives into entertainment in the media. We are already going through difficult times. He's been untruthful from the start and seems to be willing to do anything, including manipulating the situation. My wife is a good woman and she's missing. Everything else is just noise. 
But of course, Billy denied this and said that he did not pose as NCIS or as law enforcement in order to gain access into the home. He says that he was very upfront and honest with Larry from the very beginning. So we have all of the circumstantial evidence that makes Larry look very bad. It makes it seem almost obvious that Larry had to be involved. However, police have said that they don't have any suspects at this time and they're not naming any persons of interest. They are aware of the circumstantial evidence that is happening right now and they said that they're following up on any other lead and any other evidence that they had, but they're not going to share what the evidence is and they're not saying much more about it at this time. They are being very tight-lipped with revealing pretty much anything to the public. I have to thank a lot of news outlets, anonymous family members, and Billy Little for sharing all of this information with us, or else I probably wouldn't have enough information to share with you guys. The family and volunteers have also gone on several searches in many different areas to try and look to find May, but they haven't had any luck. Like I said earlier, police have said that if they knew where to look, then they would be looking in all of the areas that they were supposed to. But for now, they said that they don't know where to look and that they are following whatever leads they can, like I said, but they're not really saying anything else about the investigation. At this point, my entire purpose for sharing this video is to just get the word out there. There still may be hope that May is alive and out there, but obviously the family is just preparing for the worst. Billy Little said that this should be a murder investigation and that even if they don't find a body, the person responsible should still be taken to court and held accountable. He made a great point that people shouldn't only be prosecuted based on how good they are at hiding a body. As for Larry, many relatives who have been speaking with police and the media and Billy Little have said that they are afraid of speaking out into the public and revealing their names because they fear for their safety. Larry also hasn't been the most forthcoming with information and he hasn't spoken with the media much when he's approached. With this case, it is such a recent case, so I'm not going to go too far into theories or go over the possible scenarios. The obvious thought is that Larry is involved, and for now, I'm just going to leave it at that. Again, police know a lot more than we do. I'm literally just telling you what the media has come out and said and what the family's lawyer has been willing to share with us. Police have so much more information that we just don't know about. Maybe there's a lot more to this case that we just don't know. Maybe there's a reason they said they haven't named a suspect. I honestly don't know, so that's why I'm not going to go too far into theories and saying maybe this, maybe that. Just going to leave it where it is. But I am really looking forward to seeing what comes out about this case in the coming months. I'm curious if more comes out about their relationship as a whole, if there was any more secrets or behind the scene troubles that we didn't know about. I'm also very curious to see what happens with these poor children. If something did happen between Larry and May the night that she was last seen, where are the kids? Did Larry at least have the decency to remove them from the home during this situation? I honestly don't know at this point if the kids are still living with Larry. I saw in one article that they were seen walking with their grandfather, so hopefully they're staying with their grandparents for now, but I don't really know what exactly happened to them. If between now that I'm recording this and the time that I post this, if more comes out about what are happening with the children, I will definitely add that to this video just because I think that that's such an important part to this case. I did see in one article about when the brother came over to see if, you know, May was still in her room. I saw that the kid was instructed to tell the brother that she was in the room, but other than this, I haven't really seen the kids be mentioned in any articles. But as always, I will keep you guys updated as more information comes out about May's case. Make sure you go ahead and follow me over on Twitter because that's where I sort of keep track of the smaller and more recent updates as they come out. If there is anything big that happens with this case in the next few weeks, of course, I will definitely make a video about it. But for right now, it's just not possible for me to make a video every single time something small comes out. So again, make sure you go ahead and follow me on Twitter to get those updates as they come out. Maya Millette was 39 years old when she went missing from her Chula Vista home on January 7, 2021. She was described as being Filipino. She's 5 feet 2 inches tall, weighing 105 pounds, with brown hair and brown eyes. She has a wrist tattoo of a hummingbird and tattoos of musical notes on her shoulder and clavicle. If you have absolutely any information about May's case, please contact 619 691 51 
5151. Or you can find the Facebook page, find May Maya Millette, or email helpfindmaya at gmail.com. They also have an Instagram at helpfindmaya. Lots of information to just keep up with this case and lots of places to go if you have absolutely any information. So that is all I have for today's video, but please, because this is such a recent case, please make sure to go ahead and share Maya's case, share their family's Facebook, Instagram, any articles that you can find or share this video. Like I said, I will keep you guys updated on any information that comes out after this video is posted. But with that, that is all I have for you guys today. If you liked this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to go ahead and click the link down below and use Rachel Shannon 5 to get 33% off of your three pack of deodorant or 20% off of their other self-care products. Don't forget to go ahead and follow me over on Twitter and Instagram. Those will be linked down below. If you have absolutely any case suggestions, please make sure to go ahead and send them over to my email at rachelshannoncases at gmail.com. With that, I hope you guys have a great week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!